dear students in this module we are going to first discuss the concept of debugging and then look at the different types of errors that may occur in programming we have already seen the concept of problem solving how do we solve problems yes we write programs to solve different types of problems programs written by us may contain errors or bugs in them what is a bug let us first see what it is if we want to solve the problems with the help of different softwares or programs due to some reason we may get some unexpected result this unexpected result or output is called error it is also called as a program bug let us now see what a bug is with the help of an example our problem is to add two numbers 3 and 5 imagine that we write a program to perform the addition operation the expected output is 5 but due to some reason we may get an output 6 or 3 or some other value other than 5 in this case our program produces an unexpected output and so it contains a bug can all of us write programs without any error no it is very hard to write programs without any error even for an experienced programmer so for a program to run successfully that is to give the expected output it is necessary to remove all the errors in the program the process of finding and removing errors or bugs in the program is called debugging it is the step by step process of finding errors or bugs in a program so that the bugs can be removed to make the program function in the way it was desired it is a systematic process of spotting and fixing the number of bugs or defects in a program so that the program will work as is expected debugging is a difficult task for complex systems in particular when various subsystems are integrated so that modifications in one system may cause bugs or errors to other systems it is a developer activity and effective debugging and it is very important before testing begins to increase the quality of the system debugging will not give confidence that the system meets its requirements or not completely but testing gives confidence let us see the types of defects that occur during program development such as arithmetic defects logical defects syntax defects multi threading defects interface defects and performance defects defects are tracked based on various parameters such as defect id priority severity created by created date assigned to resolved date resolved by and status the defect will be in new state when a defect is raised and yet to be validated the defect may be in assigned state when the defect is assigned against a development team to address it but not yet resolved then the defect will be in active stage when the defect 
is being addressed by the developer and investigation is under progress. At this stage, there are two possible outcomes that is the defect is either deferred or rejected. After that, the defect will be in test stage in which the defect is fixed and ready for testing. Then the defect is in verified stage in which it is retested and the test has been verified. The defect may be in closed state if it is considered as not a defect. When the defect is not fixed, then it will be in reactivated state. If the defect is not addressable, then it is in deferred state. Finally, a defect can be rejected for any of the three reasons like duplicate defect, not a defect or non-reproducible. What will happen if the defects or errors are not removed? The program may give unexpected results or may crash if the errors are not removed. So, to prevent incorrect operation of a software or a program, we have to find and resolve the bugs or errors in the program. This is done by debugging the program. Let us see how to debug a program. We have to first clearly understand the problem. We should also know how to fix the errors in the program that we have written. Once the error is removed, the program is ready to use. Dear students, are you all aware of debuggers? What is the use of debugging tools? Debugging tools are used to identify errors in programming at various development stages. They are also called debuggers. The debugger is a program that can run our program one line at a time. Thus, the debugger can show us exactly how the computer sees our code. We can think of debugger as an instant replay that is used in sports matches. It allows us to see what happened in a given play step by step. Sports coaches use this to identify the strengths and weaknesses of their team members. The debugger does the same thing. It displays us what is happening in our program at any moment in time and allows us to visualize the step by step execution of the program. The power of the debugger is that it let us see the state of our program at any point and to advance through our program one line at a time in the exact manner that the code is being executed by the computer. In this way, it helps us to locate the cause of the error. I think all of you understood what a debugger is and what is its use. Let us next move on to the steps involved in the debugging process. The first step is to reproduce the same problem and try to identify the bug. This can be done by getting as much input from the user as possible to know the exact reason for the bug. The second step is to capture the snapshot of the process 
when the bug occurs. That is, we should try to get the values of the variables and the state of the program at that time. The next step is to analyze the snapshot based on the state and action. By doing this, we try to find the cause of the bug. The last step is to fix the existing bug and check if any other bug still exists. If so, try to fix all the bugs and try to execute the program successfully. Proper use of the debugger is essential to find the errors and to see how our program behaves. It is for this reason debugger is considered as the best friend for all programmers. Like any other tool, using the debugger will also require practice. But it is worthy to have the investment. When various subsystems or modules are used in a program, debugging becomes harder as any change in one module may cause more bugs to appear in another. Sometimes it takes more time to debug a program than to write the program itself. In order to use the debugger, we should know about the concepts like current line, breakpoints, stepping, etc. The first one is current line. A computer can do only one thing at a time while running any program the computer always has the idea of the current line. Generally control of the program flows from the current line to the next line down the screen and then to the next line and so on. This flow can be changed only by loops, if statements function calls etc. It should be noted that we do not want to always start the debugging process from the first line of the program. We usually have an approximate idea about where the program is incorrect. So, to tell the computer to run the program until a given line, we use the concept of breakpoints. The second concept is breakpoints. Normally, when we run a program, the execution will start from the first line of the program. In a similar way, the debugger will also start at the beginning of the program and run until completion or stop when an error occurs. Often we may know that the error occurs in a certain function or part of our program. In certain situations the function which contains the error is not used by our code until long time after the start of the program. In such cases breakpoints can be used to tell the debugger where to start the debugging process so that we can see what is going wrong in that function. So, breakpoints allow us to quickly get to the proper location in our code. The next one is stepping. Stepping is simply the action of telling the debugger to move through our program one line at a time. Dear students, remember that a computer program is many small steps combined to form a large goal. The problem is that one of these small steps may be incorrect. To identify which step is incorrect, we step through the program looking at 
sketch each line of code as we come to it and seeing what effect this has on the variables. We can tell the debugger to move through the code in several ways like step in, step out and step over. Let us see the difference between these three ways. When we give step in, the debugger completes the next line of the code. If this line contains a function, then the control goes to the first line of the function's code and stops, waiting for the user to now debug the function. Stepping over means to move to the next line of code in the current function. Even if the current line is a function call, all the code for that function will be executed and the new current next line will be the next line of the code that we were looking at. If the current line of execution in the program is inside the code of a function and we want to finish it that is complete all the rest of the code in the function we can use the step out command this will complete all the code in the current function and return as to the previous function that called this function dear students let us now discuss about the different types of errors that may occur in programming. So, students, we have now understood what an error is. Let us next see the different types of errors. There are three types of errors and they are syntax errors, semantic errors and logical errors. Let us see each one in detail. The first type is syntax error. Every programming language has its own syntax. So, all the programs should follow the syntax of that programming language in order to compile correctly. Any part of the code that do not conform to the syntax of the programming language will produce syntax errors. The compiler can detect these syntax errors during compilation time. These errors are easy to locate and remove because the compiler helps the programmers by specifying the location and type of error. Let us see an example of syntax error. All of us use calculators to perform some calculations. Suppose we enter a number with more than one decimal point. We will not get any output and the calculator shows an error. Yes, this is a syntax error in yes, there is a syntax error in the value that we have entered because a number cannot have more than one decimal point. Next, let us see some of the common examples of syntax errors that can occur in programming. The first one is misspelled keywords. In programming, a keyword is a word that is reserved by a program because the word has a special meaning. An example keyword is integer data type should be declared as int. If by mistake we give nit instead of int, then it is a syntax error. The second common syntax error is missing statement terminator. Every statement should end with a semicolon in some programming languages. That is int a semicolon is a valid statement. Suppose if we forget to give semicolon at the end and type as int a 
then it is a syntax error. The third example is improper matching of parentheses, square brackets and curly braces. Why writing programs we may open the parentheses, square brackets or curly braces but may forget to close them. So, this is also a syntax error. Programs having syntax errors cannot be compiled or executed. So, we should first correct all the syntax errors and then compile the program again. The second type of error in programming is runtime error. This type of error occurs during the execution of the program. It arises when we ask the computer to do something that it is unable to reliably do. In mathematics, any number divided by 0 is infinite. Whereas, in computers, there is no value called infinite. So, dividing by 0 is an error in programming. Another example is trying to open a file that does not exist is also an error. The compiler does not know about these kinds of errors when the program is compiled. So, these errors are not detected during the compilation time. A program with these types of errors will run but produce wrong output or make us termination of the program. Deduction and removal of a runtime error is a difficult task. The third type of error is logical error. Logical errors are related to the logic of the program. These errors are not detected by the compiler. A program is said to have a logic error if it has good syntax but there is a mistake in the order of the statements or perhaps a mistake in how the statements relate to one another. A good example of a logic error might be have a drink from your water bottle, put it in your bag, walk to the library and then put the top back on the bottle. Here the error is if we put the water bottle in our bag without closing it, the water will spill out. Logical errors may also happen due to poor understanding of the problem. If we do not understand the problem clearly, then we may not be able to design the program correctly. The logic of the program may go wrong. So, we may not be able to get the expected output. Some of the common examples in programming are multiplying instead of dividing, adding instead of subtracting, opening and using data from a wrong file etc. Many programs use numerical variables which are used to solve mathematical calculations. Arithmetic errors occur when the computer cannot handle problems like division by 0 which leads to an infinite result. This is an arithmetic error which can only be corrected by changing the coding portion of the program. When the value of a variable exceeds its limit, a resource error may result. Buffer overflow, usage of an uninitialized variable, access violations and stack overflows are examples of resource errors. Interface errors may arise due to mismatch of a software program with the hardware interface or application programming interface used. In case of web applications, an interface error may result from 
incorrect use of a web protocol. A thorough testing and debugging phase is an essential part of the software development cycle which can help to avoid these errors in the bud before full scale exploitation of the software program. All these errors can be avoided through pre-planning and care taken during the coding phase. Through practice and by following rigorous debugging procedures, most of the errors can be rectified during software development itself. Making mistakes is a part of learning and they can never be entirely avoided. However, I would suggest that you focus on making new mistakes and avoid repeating the ones you made before. Dear students, we shall next see what is documentation. A document is a written text or a video that describes about the program to its users. The process of preparing such a document which contains information about the program is called documentation. Next, let us see the need for documentation. Before that, tell me the developer and the users of a software or a program. Yes, a programmer develops the program. The users of a program that is developed by a programmer may be the system analyst or another programmer or an end user. So, the program written by a developer must be easily understandable by other developers and other users. The program should also be useful and understandable for current as well as future developers. So, any newly developed program must be documented properly. Let us understand the need for documentation with a small example. Imagine a larger piece of program say with 1000 lines of code. The program is built with lot of functions one calling the other. Let us consider that the program has no proper documentation. Now, we want to understand what a particular function does that is what is the use of that function. But that function uses three other undocumented functions. So, we need to first understand what is the use of these three functions. Suppose each of these three functions uses another two undocumented functions. So, we must first understand these functions. So, the process goes on and on. So, to understand a single function whose length is just 10 lines of code, we finally end up reading all the 1000 lines of code that is the entire program. So, it is a time consuming job. This is the problem with an undocumented program or a software. Generally, the lifetime of a program is very long. During its life cycle, the program may be subject to changes like enhancements and bug fixes etc. The developers who work on a program may change during its lifespan. Future programmers such as newcomers to a software project and maintenance people will find it very difficult to understand the program if no documentation is available. So, any undocumented program is 
thrown away as unmaintainable during various stages of development of a software or a program multiple documents will be prepared for different users so documentation plays an important role in the overall software development process i think that you are all now clear why a program has to be documented next let us see the types of documentation there are two types of documentation they are internal documentation and external documentation internal documentation consists of necessary comments included in the program use of meaningful identifiers and proper use of indentation and spacing that helps convey the structure and meaning of the code external documentation is typically written as a document separate from the program itself it usually consists of a user guide and sometimes includes a detailed description of the design and implementation features of the program external documentation can be broken down into library documentation which describes tools that a programmer can use and user documentation which is intended for users of an application next let us see the guidelines for preparing a document first one is the document should be unambiguous that is it should be very clear the next guideline is that the documentation should be prepared from the point of view of the reader that is the user the last one is that there should be no repetition and it should be updated as and when the program is modified next let us see some of the advantages of providing proper program documentation first one is that the document keeps track of all the parts of the software or program the next advantage is that the maintenance of the software is easier the next important advantage is that the programmers other than the developer can also understand all aspects of software the last advantage is that the proper documentation improves the overall quality of the software well students i hope you understand about debugging the different types of errors and documentation thank you